Welcome to edisathi.com, your partner in education. In this lecture, we'll discuss nouns and pronouns, the first two parts of which. Let's start our discussion about nouns. Nouns. These are the names of anything, say to be in person, place, thing, animal, object, Name of anything is known as a noun. While we were young, we used to play a game known as name, place, animal thing, wherein we had to name either of these things that started with a single common letter. This game was based on the concept of nouns. Nouns can be the names like that of a guy, Bob, Ram, Sham, Ali, or it could be the names of the countries like India, Pakistan, China, United States of America, or anything. Or it could be the names of mountains, Kanchanchanga, Mount Everest, Mount Andy, or it could be the name of the general things like table, chair, pen, pencil, or even a mobile. Anything, the name of anything is known as a noun. Now consider these sentences. We say Ashoka was a great king. Sita is a beautiful girl. Kolkata is a metro city. Or police dispersed the crowd. We see that Ashoka is a noun because it's the name of something, even king. King is a noun because it is the name of the designation that Ashoka had. He was the king. So it's the name of that designation that becomes a noun. Likewise, Sita is the name of the girl and even girl is a noun because it's the name of the community or, the th or her belongingness towards a group of people which are known as girls. Likewise, city is a noun as well as Kolkata is also a noun. Police, all those people who are involved in guarding and helping the people are known as policemen. So police is a noun here. It's the name of the set of those people who help in regulating the rules, thus it is a noun. Likewise, crowd is also a noun. Thus, nouns are the names of any and everything. Now, we s there are five types of nouns, namely proper noun, common noun, abstract noun, collective noun, and material noun. We start with proper nouns. The name of a very particular thing or place is known as a proper noun. For example, Ram, Sham, Sita, Gita, these are proper nouns. Likewise, if I say London, London, even London is a proper noun. Or I say the Great Britain, even this is a proper noun. So the names of very particular things are known as proper nouns. The names of general things or generic names of a common set of things are known as common nouns. For example, boy. So there are many boys in this world. Boy is a noun or a name of any person who has those attributes or qualities. So this thing is known as a boy. So boy becomes a common noun. The other such examples would be city, man, girl or even table and chair these are common nouns abstract means anything that can only be felt it cannot be touched it cannot be seen so such things are abstract things and the names given to such things are known as abstract nouns for example goodness or bravery the stories of the bravery of 
the military men are often told to us now here bravery it can only be felt or imagined in it it cannot be seen it cannot be touched it has no form thus bravery becomes an abstract now the names of things that are together now there is a collection of things we call this collection as something so that that name is known as a collective noun for example crowd mob team or a bunch now i say a bunch of flowers so their bunch becomes a collective noun the names of the things that are used for the construction construction of further things are known as material nouns so the names of the materials are known as material nouns for example iron wood plastic or even gold silver these are material nouns now we can also differentiate the nouns based on countables and uncountable nouns countable nouns that you can head count now, for example boys if i say there are 50 boys in the class so boys is a countable noun why because it is like you can count them 1 2 3 4 so you can head count them so this becomes countable uncountable the things that can only be measured you cannot or you can just estimate how much it would be for example if there's some milk in this jar so you cannot count it's like 50 milk or 60 milk no you you can say it's 50 liter of milk but you cannot say it's 50 milk or 60 milk here liter is the defining unit and even unit it is an abstract quantity that is used to represent something so here it needs a unit these things are known as uncountable nouns which need or which which can be just measured or need a unit for their counting so these things are known as uncountable nouns for example milk oil sugar or even honesty honesty is an abstract noun but it is uncountable you cannot count on honesty that like it's 80 honesty or 90 honesty now one thing which we must all understand is that countable nouns do have a plural for example i say 50 boys but one boy so i just said 50 boys and one boy so it as and when it becomes 50 that is more than one it takes an additional s whereas uncountable nouns do not have a plural form it is 50 liter of milk and if i increase it it becomes 100 liter of milk and even if i decrease it it becomes 1 liter of milk it does not change to milks anywhere now certain things that we've already discussed in the session of articles we'll repeat them here that articles are never used before the proper nouns or even before the abstract nouns or material nouns now for example in this sentence i say the priya is a pretty girl it becomes incorrect because priya is a proper noun likewise the honesty is the best policy it is incorrect why because these never used in front of the abstract noun so here it is an abstract noun it was a proper noun here and the chair is made of wood wood is a name of material so we will not put the here since it is used before the material noun another thing that we must always remember is that whenever we are using a proper noun in a sentence it will always start with a capital letter it will never start with a small letter. for example i say i live in ludhiana So I'll not say, write Ludhiana with a small letter. I'll write it as a capital letter. Likewise, it's London. It's not London. 
even in the running hand it will be London yes we have done certain exceptions to the given rules for example if somebody's name is being used as an adjective we can use the the in front of the name for example he is the Luke Min of his age or we say he is the Amitabh Bachchan of our class he is the Amitabh Bachchan of our class now here I am comparing this guy to Amitabh Bachchan based on some acting skills or personality thus I am using Amitabh Bachchan as an adjective and I'll write the here. Likewise, the names that are unique or of heavenly bodies take the, for example, the sun, the earth, and the Himalayas. Since these are the unique as well as heavenly bodied names, so we'll write the in front of them. Lastly, if a material noun is being used as an adjective, we write the in front of it. For example, I said the plastic bag. Now here, plastic is not a noun. It is an adjective. It tells you the quality of the bag. That what sort of bag it is. It is a plastic bag. To better understand it, if I write the plastic bag and parallelly, I write the strong bag. Now you'll get to understand what do I mean. When I look at this second sentence, I see strong is telling you the quality of the bag. What sort of bag it is? It is a strong bag. So it is an adjective. Parallelly I've written this sentence where I see it's the plastic bag. Now what is the quality of the bag? It is made of plastic. So it is not a noun. It is an adjective. And we can use the in front of adjective. So it becomes correct. We can classify the nouns as masculine or feminine based on their gender. As the names suggest, masculine is the gender that associates to men, whereas feminine is the gender that associates to women. There are things that do not have any gender. For example, a table or a chair what gender do they have? They cannot be classified on the basis of masculine or gender or feminine gender. We generally say these things have neuter gender. That is, they are neutral in the terms of gender. Now certainly there may be some cases where we may need to put a noun uh, like we meet we maybe uh, there is a need of classifying the gender of some or the other noun but we do not know what is the gender for example uh, there's a sentence like a doctor must be aware of dash patients and I need to fill either his or her or its in this sentence. Now, what would be the correct option to be filled? I can fill his, but what if it's a women doctor? If I write his hair and I say a doctor must be aware of his patients, then that means if it's a woman doctor, it, it, if it's a lady doctor, she might not be aware and that is okay but that is not the case likewise if I write her hair the thing goes in for a man now if it's a guy doctor he need not to be wary about the patient's health only if it's a woman doctor she needs to be wary about the patient's health again that would be incorrect I cannot write its hair because it is always used with used with those things that are neutral or immortal or the things that do not have life a doctor obviously lives then what do I write here well in such cases we generally say that the gender of such a noun 
that is here in this case that would be a doctor we'll take it to be the masculine now so i'll write his now obviously that does not mean ki if there is a women doctor she need not to be aware of her patients she also needs to be aware of the, her patients but in the general sentences we'll simply write his to solve the purpose likewise there are certain designations that are only filled by women or there are certain professions that are filled by women only that are followed by women only for example an air hostess or a maid now a guy can never be a maid or he can never be an air hostess so for such cases we'll write her with these sentences now for example i say a maid must do dash job nicely now obviously it's a maid and maids are only women so i write her here and not his so in case if we need to fill in the blank with the gender we'll always associate masculine gender with the genders that we are unaware of but if the thing is a feminine thing that is it is done only by women we'll put a feminine gender there likewise we can if we are personifying certain things uh the things that are associated to strength and violence are said to be men so for example we say sun is a god whereas the things that are related to beauty and gentleness we relate them to women so we say moon is a goddess we said uh that collective nouns are the nouns uh that refer to certain things together thus we can say that when it comes to a number of similar things we may use different or similar nomenclature that is a similar or different noun for example if it's only one person we say it is a boy but if there are many persons we say it is these are boys thus we write an additional s in front of the noun like for if it's a tree we write an additional s it becomes trees certainly there may be cases we where we our person uh, our purpose cannot be solved by adding an additional s for example in the case of a man we cannot write mans as the plural of man that would be incorrect we write men we change the spelling and write men likewise for a woman it becomes a woman likewise uh we have to check certain spellings for example if it is a mango so the correct plural will not be mangoes that goes incorrect we we'll write m a n g o e s so this es means that there are many mangoes if it's a cherry the plural would be cherries that is i remove this y and write i e s here certain times we cannot change the spelling based on adding an additional s or es or i e s or changing a to e for example in the case of fish if i write the plural of fish as fishes that goes incorrect why because fishes refers to the variety of fish for example in a in an aquarium if there are eight different types of fishes i'll say there are fishes but if it's only one fish there but multiple number of that similar fish for example an aquarium has 30 nemo fishes what do i say i cannot say there are 30 nemo fishes i'll say it is a shoal of fish likewise it's a herd of sheep or you may say it's a school of shark 
there are certain things that are singular as well as plural there is no need to change the spelling of that thing for example hair even if it's a single hair i say it's hair or at the most you can call it as a strand of hair but we generally say it to be hair hair is plural as well as as well as singular the certain things are plurals but they are treated as singulars for example if i say the school is closed on monday does that mean that the only building would be closed and the internal operations would go on or if i say class is absent does that mean only a single person is absent obviously not if i say class is absent means that all the students who are studying in the class are absent this means that there are certain things which are plurals but they are treated as singulars like school class nation army navy poultry likewise if i say my pants are torn does that mean all my pants are torn like if i have 30 pairs of pants all of them are torn obviously not it's just the one that i'm talking about or i say pass me those pair of scissors does that mean there are 30 pairs lying there and you need to pass me all of them no there's only one and that you need to pass to me this means that there are certain singulars sorry sir certain singulars that are treated as plurals for example pants trousers spectacles scissors these are the singulars that are treated as plurals likewise we said there are plurals that are treated as singulars like nation army poultry likewise there are singulars that are treated as plurals for example pants trousers or spectacles in the names of that are complex for example brother in law or if i say sister in law if i have to write the plural of such a name i cannot write brother in laws because if i write brother in laws so the plural here would be laws that is there is only one person and there are multiple number of laws according to which he is your brother in laws that goes incorrect so the right one is brothers in law so i'll say one of my brothers in law or commanders in chief now we discuss the subject and object case of a noun for example consider this sentence like john threw a stone now we have two nouns here john and stone now the person who does the work is the subject that is he is doing the work an object is the noun or the person or the thing that is affected by the verb this means that the effect of the verb comes upon the object whereas the subject does the work thus in this sentence john threw a stone we have two nouns these are john and stone john threw it that is he is doing the work so john becomes the subject whereas he threw a stone that is the stone is affected by throwing it so it is the object in the other terms we may call it as normative or accusative normative is the subject and accusative is the object so if there is any sentence you need to find out which is the subject and which is the object the best way is ask the question who to find the subject so the answer to the question who would be given by subject and answer to the question any other question like where how with whom etc is given by object now for example consider this sentence i say sanya eats now who eats sanya eats thus it becomes the subject 
I rewrite this sentence as Sanya eats an apple. We have two nouns here now. Apple and Sanya. Now ask the question who? Who eats Sanya? Since the answer is Sanya, it becomes the subject. Right? And what does she eat? She eats an apple. So it becomes the object. Right? If I write the sentence as Sanya eats Sanya and Bob eat. Now who eat? We get two answers. Sanya and Bob. Both of them eat, so both of them are subjects. And since there's nothing mentioned, there's no mention about what do they eat or where do they eat, it becomes that, that it follows that there is no object. Now consider the sentence like Sanya ate an apple. Uh, in the room. We have three nouns here. Sanya, apple and room. Now, who ate the apple? Sanya ate it. So this means Sanya is the subject. What did she eat? She ate an apple. And since it's answered by what, it becomes the object. Likewise, where did she eat it? She ate it, she ate it in a room. So again, it is answered by anything else apart from who it becomes the object. So this sentence has one subject and two objects. And here we said that there were two subjects. Thus, any sentence may have n number of subjects. Likewise, it may have n number of objects. Now consider a sentence like Sanya comma along with Bob comma eight. We have two nouns that Sanya and Bob. Now who ate? The answer is not Sanya along with Bob. The answer is only Sanya. Thus, the subject is only Sanya. With whom did she eat? She ate it with, with Bob. Thus, Bob is being answered by the question whom and not who. Thus, he becomes the object and not the subject. Another thing, now consider a sentence like Sanya eats and a sentence like Sanya eats apple and lastly a sentence eats apples. Now clearly we can see that this sentence, the third sentence, is incorrect. Why? Because it is incomplete. Whereas these two sentences are correct. Here we have a verb that is eating, sana as the subject. Here we have sana as subject, eat as verb, and apples as object. Thus, we get to know that any sentence is only complete if it has a subject plus a verb. An object is optional. The sentence may or may not have an object, but it ought to have a subject and a verb. Lastly, we have possessive case of a noun. Now, if I say this is my pen or the pen is mine, now I am showing the ownership of the pen by the use of my or mine. Likewise, if I say this is Ram's pen or the pen belongs to Ram, uh, if I write the sentence as the pen belongs to Ram, obviously that would not show the ownership as much as the this is Bob's pen does. Now, I've written this sentence as this is Bob's pen. Here, Bob is a noun. 
which is showing the ownership of the pen by the use of this apostrophe s. So thus, this is the case of possessive or genitive noun. Wherein you are showing the belongingness of something, belongingness of a noun to some other noun. That this pen belongs to somebody, which is Bob. So this apostrophe s is the uh, possessive case of Bob. Now we continue our discussion about the pronouns. Now the words that are used instead of nouns are known as pronouns. For example, he, she, it, they, them, us, we, you, I, me, etc. All of them are pronouns. Uh, it becomes very clumsy while you are writing or speaking about someone like Sanya is a good girl, Sanya studies in ABC school, Sanya uh, wants to become a doctor. Now every time rather than speaking Sanya, 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 I just mention a name once that is Sanya is a good girl and then I start speaking she instead of Sanya because then obviously she would point to Sanya. So pronouns basically are used to substitute the use of nouns. The pronouns may be classified as personal pronouns and based on this classification I can say that pronoun may be a first person pronoun, it might be a second person pronoun or it might be a third person pronoun. For example, a first person pronoun is I or we, whereas a second person pronoun is you and a third person pronoun is he, she, it, they, etc. Now how do we differentiate between them? While in the communication, the speaker is the first person. So all those pronouns that the speaker will use are the first person pronouns. For example, I, we, me, myself, mine. The person whom he is talking to, that is the listener, is the second person. So all those pr uh, pronouns that are used for this listener, for example, you, your, these all are the second person pronouns. And supposing the, in the communication they are referring to someone else. Now this someone else is the third person to the communication. So all those pronouns that are used for this third person are third person pronouns. For example, he, she, it, they, etc. Now we said that a noun is divided in three different types based on the gender as masculine, feminine and neuter. So we use he with all the masculine nouns. Apart from he we may use his or him. Likewise we use she with the feminine nouns. Apart from she we may use her or generally yes, her or herself. And it is used for non-living things that is the neuter gender. It is also used with animals. It is used with places such as it is a big place or it is a small place. Lastly, it is used with young children or the adolescents. All the children below the age of 5 are referred using it. Now this is a very important point. The reason is that it is very difficult to decide the gender of a, such a young child based on the visual sight. Now I cannot say that a baby in the hands of the mother whether it is a guy or a girl. So I use it with that baby. So if a sentence is like while playing the child broke his leg. So this sentence is incorrect. Why? Because we'll use it with the child and we write its leg. As like the nouns, pronouns also have cases. Uh, the subject and the object case that are present in the cases of 
pronouns as well. So for example, consider a sentence like Bob uh, bought a gift for Sanya. And another sentence like Sanya bought a gift for Bob. Now in these two sentences, like if I consider the first sentence here, Bob is the subject and the small s denotes subject and Sanya is the object, the small o uh, denotes the object. In the second sentence, Sanya becomes the subject and Bob becomes the object. I believe, like let's suppose that Bob is a man and Sanya is a woman. Now if I want to replace Bob with any pronoun, what should I write? I write he for Bob. And if I want to replace Sanya with any pronoun, what should I write? I write her for Sanya. Likewise, if I want to write any pronoun for Sanya in the second sentence, I'll have to write she and here I'll write to. I'll have to write him. Now I see that the same person, when he comes in the subject case, he takes a different pronoun, whereas he takes a very different pronoun in the object case, and same happens with Sanya. Now, if I remove any of these and write my own name, again, I'll have to say I bought a gift for Sanya, and Sanya bought a gift for me. So this happens to me as well. This means that all the pronouns that come in the subject case are different and all the pronouns that come in the object case are different. The table here defines the same. All the pronouns that come in the subject cases are different whereas all the pronouns that come in the object cases are different. So if I need to say, I, if I'm talking about myself, I'll say I when I come in the subject, whereas me when I come in the object. Likewise, he, she, we, they, it, and you are the subject cases, whereas the object cases are me, him, her, us, them. It remains it in the object case as well as you also remains you in the object case. These two are exceptions. Now I re-go back to, I, uh, I go back to the previous type, slide. Let's consider a sentence like, I have Sam's book. Now, if I want to replace Sam with some pronoun, believing that Sam is a guy, what should I write? I'll have to write his here. Now, if I check through the table, I find that his is neither a subject case nor an object case. His shows the possession of the book, that is, it is the possessive case of the pronoun, thus it becomes a possessive pronoun in the general senses, we say it to be a emphatic pronoun. Thus emphatic pronoun is the possessive case of any pronoun or noun. So likewise I have I, me and in the possessive case it becomes mine, he, him, his, she, 
her, hers, or her. Here also we may have my, our or ours, theirs, its. These are the possessive pronouns. And we were discussing you. So the possessive case of you becomes your or yours. Again, I go back to the previous slide. And I rewrite my sentence as Bob bought a gift for Now this time he bought a gift for himself that is he bought a gift for Bob. If I, if I write a pronoun for Bob here it would be he but here it would neither be he nor him nor his it would be himself. So I see that in this case where the subject and the object have the same person that is the verb turns back to the subject, I'll have to write a fourth form of or the fourth case of pronoun which is known as the reflexive pronoun. Thus reflexive pronoun is nothing but a case where the subject and the object are the same person or a technical definition would say reflexive pronoun is the pronoun where the verb turns back to the subject. Now it is true for anybody. Put Sanya in place of Bob. I say she bought a gift for herself. If I put my name there, I'll say I bought a gift for myself. Thus in the case of reflexive pronouns, I'll have to write cells in front of or cells in front of the possessive case. So it becomes myself, himself, herself, ourselves, their selves, itself, and in case of you, it becomes yourself. Now you can fill in this sentence with various forms of cases. Now, you and I went to the market to buy clothes for either myself or me or himself or anything. Two things that we must always keep in our mind. First, if a sentence starts with let, the object case has to be filled in the case of subject. Now, for example, let dash do the work. Now, if I want to do the work, I'll write me here and not I. Reason being, since the sentence starts with let, the subject will turn to the object pronoun. It will take the object pronoun. Same as the case of him, her, it, anything. Secondly, if in a sentence there are all the three pronouns, that is the first person, the second person and the third person coming together, the chronological sequence would be second person, then the third person and lastly the first person. So it would be you, he and I will do something or will go to the market. We have just discussed the difference between the reflexive and emphatic pronoun. So reflexive pronoun is used when the action done by the subject turns back on the subject or in simple language where the reflexive, uh, reflexive pronoun is the pronoun where subject becomes equal to the object. An emphatic pronoun shows the ownership over something.
here and we can differentiate between the case of who and who. You remember when we were discussing the subject and the object case, I said the question who answers the subject, whereas any other question, including whom, gives the object. Now, the reason is that who itself is the subject question, whereas whom is the emphatic question. For example, whom does the pen belong to? Now the answer is it belongs to him. And since him is the object case, whom also is the object. The best way to memorize this is that whatever is the answer, if the answer is a subject, so the question would also be a subject. But if answer is an object, the question is also an object. If I write whosoever it concerns, So this would be incorrect. Why? Because it concerns him. So the correct sentence would be whomsoever it concerns. We have demonstrative pronouns. These are four in number. Namely this, that, these, those. The, these is the plural form of this whereas that those is the plural form of that now for example you're standing here and there are certain things lying here and certain number of things lying there so if it's one hair and one hair you this is something that is near and that is something that is far if there are n number of things here n number of things there so this becomes these and it becomes those. So if there are the things that are far are that or those, where are the things that are near are this or these. Lastly, we have indefinite or distributive pronouns. We start the discussion with indefinite pronouns. These are the pronouns that point to something in general. If I say one must be aware of one's deed, their one is true for any person. So indefinite pronoun pronouns are used for general purposes. Distributive pronouns wherein there's a collection of people, it's a collective noun and you're referring to one at a time. For example, each student. Now there are multiple students and you're picking one so each student is a defaulter this means you pick any among these and one of them any one among these and he would be or she would be a defaulter so thus each either neither these are the distributive pronouns distributive pronoun would show one at a time case this gets us to the end of the discussion of nouns and pronouns. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you so much and have a nice day.